Oh. Well, hello, and thanks for joining me for another Airbrush Asylum video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to clean out this airbrush. That's right. Simple tips to show you how to keep this thing clean once you've finished using your paint. So let's get into that right now. So the first step in cleaning your airbrush when you're finished painting is we need to tip the paint back into its original container. Now obviously if this has uh, been thinned, so in this case I have thinned this but this has already got some pre-thinned paint in there. If you want to keep them separate from the original then I recommend just getting yourself some empty bottles and decanting them into that and keeping this uh, basically as is and don't tip your paint back into the original bottle then. So now we need to clean out the rest of the residue from the paint. So obviously it's uh, totally filled up the cup there. Um, I've spilt a little bit on the side and we've also got the lid that needs cleaning. And I'm going to use my tabletop cleaning station which you can see here. You can also get your wider branded ones. This is just uh, one of the cheap ones. Still has the little filter, which can be replaced. So you can see I've put a reasonably fresh one in there that just clips into that and pops back in. And that just uh, captures, captures your overspray. And then uh, what I like to do is I like to use a tray underneath because if you don't, you're gonna get, well, let me show you what happens if you don't. All right, so if we've got that sitting on our bench and we're going into the cleaning, we're blasting this out and then I'm going to flush the water through the top here, like so. You'll see that for this part it's okay, but once we get to the rear end of the airbrush. So all I'm doing at the moment is full throttle on the trigger, as you can see, and that's just blasting all that paint into this little reservoir. You can see that the uh, paint is going down. It takes a little while to totally run clear. So we can see from that that it's still not 100% clean. So we'll get back to that. But I just want to show you what happens if you don't have a little tray underneath. So now we remove the handle, we loosen the locking nut. You don't have to undo this totally, all right? So just loosen it, and that allows the needle to be pulled out. Do that carefully. While you've pulled the needle out, you can also just give it a quick wipe. Whenever you're wiping the needle, wipe away from yourself. Do not do it the other way, because you can stab yourself, and trust me, they are very, very sharp. So now we're just gonna pop our needle down like that. And now you'll see why I need this tray. So now flushing through the back of the airbrush, which is the most important part that a lot of people don't realize needs to be done. You can see I'm getting a lot of water coming out, all right? So all I do is we grab our trusty tray here, sit it into that, and then it's just gonna drip into the tray. All right, and fill up obviously the tray over time. So you need to then clear that out. So with our classes, you may have seen on some of our other videos that we don't actually use these particular tabletop cleaning stations in our classes. The reason being is um, we've got a setup which is virtually like an empty plastic bucket like this with some um, car sponges in it to absorb the water and students can just blast out into that and we usually have one between two students. I find that this method would just be a bit messier for the students. So. It's just my personal opinion, not saying it's not what you should use. It's totally up to you how or whichever way works best for you. 
but I now come in with a bit of paper towel and clean out the reservoir so that it's nice and clean like so. Got a little bit of paint that's dripped up on the front there. That's okay. Now be careful when you've pulled the needle out um, you can actually remove the trigger and that can drop out on you. Okay, so when that you can see here that little gap so that's where the needle sits through. So as soon as that needle is pulled out, that allows for the trigger to obviously fall out. If that happens with this particular airbrush, the um, Iwata HPC SE Clips, you can just pull back like so. All right, just pull back on this little lever and drop that back in. Now you'll see there's a notch just there on the back of the trigger that goes towards the back of the airbrush and a little bit tricky to sort of line that back up in there but as soon as we do uh, you'll see that we'll get action any moment now there we go and now it's working again alright so that's just a little tip for you there that happens quite regularly now we've already wiped our needle, we've flushed through the back which is very important and we've cleaned out the uh, paint reservoir. So now I'm going to reinsert the needle nice and carefully. So I'm just pushing it in until it seats. You can see I'm putting a little bit of pressure, firm but not, not like jabbing it. You don't want to do that because then you can damage the fluid nozzle. You could um, split it or you could flare it and then you'll have all sorts of trouble, all right? So just keep pushing until you can feel it hit the end. Give it a slight little push to make sure it's nice and seated. And then the most important thing, you've got to re-tighten this, all right? So we pull that back and you can see we've got action. Even by putting a bit of water in there, it's gonna simulate some paint and you can see we've got action. Now, if that was loose, and I get this a lot with my students, they forget to tighten that up. They've put paint back in their airbrush and they're like, I've cleaned it all, nothing's coming out. First thing I'll check is that that locking nut has been tightened. Without that tight, the needle can't go back and forth. Therefore, it won't allow paint to come out the end of the airbrush. All right, so make sure that is locked up like so. All right, now we can refit our handle. You can see you've also got the cutaway handle on the Eclipse. Um, the reason for that, you might see that on other airbrushes, is that if you've got a blockage and you want to clear it quickly, you can press down for air and then just give it some real heavy bursts by pulling back in that cutaway. All right, and that's just going to clear out any dry tip drying or whatever you may have. So just going to get rid of the last little bit of uh, water out of that. Like so. Right, so that's nice and clean now. You can see nothing's coming out. Another good way to test to see if it is clean is just take the handle back off, loosen the locking nut, pull the needle out, and wipe it on yourself. You can see there's no paint residue whatsoever, so we know that that needle is nice and clean, and we're ready for our next color. If you're doing complementary colors, say you're going from yellow to a red, then you don't need to fully clean it every time. You could just flush it out, blast it out, put the next tone in, and it's gonna obviously make a bit of an orange. Blast that through until you get the red and you're off and running. So totally up to you. You will waste a bit more paint doing it that way, um, but it uh, speeds up the process if you're doing artwork, especially for a living and you're on a time frame. So now here, we just wanna give this a bit of a clean. So again, with a bit of water. I'm not using any airbrush cleaner at all, just water, okay? You can use airbrush cleaner, it works really well. I use it mainly for stubborn blockages, and I do also run it in my classes because I find um, when you're learning how to airbrush, you haven't got that double action technique working perfectly, therefore you're getting a lot more tip drying, and that's also in turn blocking up your airbrush. All right, so that's all done. You'll make sure that breather hole you can see through and that is all nice and clean and ready for the next color. Okay, so another little tip is if you're ever airbrushing and you're 
trigger starts to stick down. Mine's nice and clean at the moment. But let's say that was uh, sticking down. Let me just clear the bench here quickly. And I'm just wiping with paper towel. You can also use, just show you before we go to the next step. You can also use these little guys. They're called studio wipes. They're essentially like a baby wipe. Uh, there's 12 wipes in the pack and they're soaked in airbrush cleaner and these work really, really well. So look out for these. These do come in the cleaning kit as well. So um, check that out. Okay, so back to a sticky trigger. All right, so let's say that is sticking down. I'm just gonna put the air cap back on. I do, as you noticed, I like removing the air cap on the on all my Iwatas. The reason being is it just allows for a bit finer detail, um, but you've just gotta be careful that you do not drop your airbrush. So I'm just gonna refit that for the purpose of the next part. And I'm just gonna unclick the air. We've got a quick connect on there. And we're gonna unscrew the section of the quick connect to access the um, the area underneath the airbrush here, which is the uh, plunger assembly. So we're gonna to go to our kit, the Iwata maintenance toolkit. And you can see it's got quite a few cool looking things in here. It's got a little holder for your needles. Uh, these are great. They're actually your multi-grips, but they've got that Teflon so it won't scratch your microns or any of your wider airbrushes. So really good for getting the head assemblies off. Then you've got uh, a couple of um, needle packing tools here. So you can get in there and replace your needle packing with ease. They've got a uh, 1.4 and a 1.2, so I tend to use the 1.2 for my microns. Um, they also have that little, you can kind of see here, that unscrews that little screw on the micron as well. I'll just show you that while we've got that going. That little, that little screw in there, they unscrew that. Then you've also got your nozzle wrench, which I highly recommend use this do not use those little lever wrenches that they give you it's uh, quite easy to um, strip the thread on your nozzle when replacing it and we've also got this little tool here now we do sell this as well a similar tool to this um, that is a lot cheaper however it does not allow you to remove the plunger assembly and access that area on an eclipse you can see this is a larger version most of the ones that you'll find elsewhere will be the smaller one. So if you have an Eclipse, you kind of have to get this toolkit um, so that you can get in there and fix that up. Then they've got like a little storage uh, compartment thing as well, plus spots here where you can, you know, put your airbrushes in there. All right. Anyway, enough of the toolkit. Let's show you how to fix this sticky trigger. Now, obviously, mine isn't sticking, but let's presume it is. We are going to come in here and remove this. So those prongs sit into those holes there. And we just unscrew that. Nice and carefully. Now when you get to the end, be very, very cautious. I'm working in my studio here and I'm very careful. Um, if I was doing this in a classroom, I would definitely have the cleaning mat. It has lips on it and things will not go missing so it's trust me it's a great investment you do not want to lose that little spring so now that we've unscrewed that you can see we've got that little screw piece there and we're going to remove the spring and also the plunger assembly okay so this is generally what causes the sticking that's so when you press down on your trigger obviously that pushes this down the spring and that's where you're getting your action if you have any dirt in this area at all like it can be the most minute little speck of dust or dirt or even paint residue I trust me I've seen paint down here 
Some of my students have managed to do that, which is amazing. Um, you generally find paint in some amazing spots where you never thought was possible, but trust me, I have seen paint down here, but only a little bit of paint will stop that action happening. So what I like to do is remove all of this, okay? And then get a little uh, cotton bud and we're gonna spray a bit of uh, water on that and we're gonna clean it. So let's go do that now. Okay, so here I have my cotton bud. Just gonna pull that out of the package. And I'm just going to drop a bit of water on there. And we're gonna grab this and I'm just going to run that up and down, up and down. Now I like these little cotton buds because of the pointy end, quite handy when you're doing artwork. Not sure where they would be available overseas, um, but you can get them here in Australia. So we have them for all of our classes. But um, look around, you should be able to find them. And then, um, yeah, so I'll rub it off like that and then you can also use this end to dry it. And I'll do the same in here. Give that a bit of a clean. And then we want to put that back together and that will fix our sticky trigger. All right, so for anyone that's having that problem, trust me, that'll fix it. Now to reinsert this, I'm gonna stick that back onto this tool. It makes life a lot easier. And that has to, that hole has to go and line up with that little plunger. You can feel it go into the center and then you're getting a bit of tension from that spring. And we're just gonna wind that right back up like so. And we're just gonna check. Yep, trigger's working nicely. Let's just hook it up. I mean, you know that this hasn't been faulty, but Hook that back up like so, click it back on the quick connect, and there you go. Okay, so our airbrush is nice and clean. I'm not going to focus at all on the front section of the airbrush. We can save that for another video later on. I just wanted to basically cover what I do every single time I change color and how I clean my airbrush. Obviously, if you're using a siphon feed, you would do a similar procedure, but the main thing to take from this video is that you always need to flush through the back um, otherwise paint can travel back up your needle and um, especially if you've got a blockage and then you can start getting dried paint on there and I've seen it where they've seized up so badly you have to get pliers to pull the needle out and obviously that's not going to do your airbrush any good. So keeping it clean is the best way to, to keep working at an optimal level and keeping your airbrush performing extremely well. And I also wanted to just show you quickly how to um, fix a sticky trigger because I know that's a common problem. So hopefully this has helped you guys out. So I do hope that you enjoyed this quick little video to show you how to keep your airbrush nice and clean and running smoothly whenever you're creating artwork. So if this is the first time to the channel, I'd love to have you as part of the community. Feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon that'll notify you every time I put out new content. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye for now. That's time to go.